Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new update for Unified Drive, and that's Unified Drive 3.0. This brought a lot of cool improvements, including new storage pools. And we also have an update to the license free Unify Identity app, which we'll take a look at. So let's jump right into it. Before we take a look at our storage pools, I want to take a look at the search functionality because that's been updated. So on the left hand corner, if we click on all files, we could now see that we have search in drive. We could create a new shared drive, but we could also search for different file types. So if we want to do images, we could do that just with the click. Video, we could do that. Music, which I don't think I have any on here. Oh, I have one song on there. And then we have PDF files. We could also do a search of the drive for the name. So if I type in Unify, it's going to bring up everything that has Unify in the name, which is quite a lot because that has all my videos from the past in it right now. Probably the biggest improvement in this update is the new storage pools. And how we find that, we click on the settings wheel, we go to control plane, and then we go over to storage. I did add two other drives into my UNAS. I had four drives originally, and I believe they were four terabyte each, and I added two more eight terabyte drives. You'd see here the storage looks a lot different. For our first one, we could create multiple RAID groups in a pool to maximize capacity and minimize wasted space with mixed drives. And it gives you an example here that you have one hard drive that is failure protected, and we have it in RAID 5, and it gives us 56 terabytes. But if we do it in multiple RAID groups, we have two HDDs with failure, and then we have a RAID 5, but we have a 72 terabytes available, so we do get more capacity. As you can see, with multiple RAID groups, we could use different size of drives. At the top, they have 16 terabyte. At the bottom, they have 8 terabyte. We could also mix and match between HDDs and SSDs, which is really nice. Now, the second one, we have multiple storage pools. So create storage pools with different RAID groups types to meet diverse needs. And the last one is multiple storage pools. Use global hot spares for automatic failover and better reliability. The default pool is the legacy pool or it's the storage pool one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on that. With storage pool one brought up, we could see it comes up with a warning. Legacy storage pool limitation. RAID group expansion isn't supported. Mixing HDDs and SSDs may impact performance. We recommend backing up your data to another server and removing the legacy storage, then create a new storage pool and restore your data from backup. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Right now you can see what my capacity is. We have only 1.1 terabyte in use out of 23.98 and it's in RAID 5. Scrolling down to the bottom, we can see our RAID group one, but we can't create another RAID group because it's in legacy. So what we need to do, we need to remove storage pool one and make sure that you back up your data, which I have already done to a separate UNAS. Now a warning comes up, this will permanently erase two personal drives and five shared drives in your storage pool. This action cannot be undone. File services, SMB and NFS on other storage pools may be temporarily disrupted. Connections will resume automatically after the removal is created, and we're gonna understand to proceed and press remove. With the legacy pool now removed, we can't look at any files. It says set up our storage. So I'm gonna click on set up storage, and we're just gonna have one storage pool for this video, and I'm gonna add drives. I'm just gonna do RAID 5 for this, and we're gonna select the first four drives. Then we're gonna create another RAID group, and we're gonna select the last two drives. After that's done, we're just gonna press create. It says reformat drives to create new storage pools. All data on selected drives will be erased during reformatting. This action cannot be undone. And we're gonna understand it because we've already backed up all of our data. After creating our storage pool one, we could see that the storage pool status is syncing and hovering over that, it says it's gonna take about 10 hours to complete. So we're just gonna wait and then I'm gonna bring all my backup data over to this NAS. Speaking about backups, Ubiquity already allows us to do different cloud services like Google Drive and OneDrive, but now we have Dropbox, and in the future, we're gonna have Amazon S3, we're gonna have Backblaze B2, and we're also gonna have Wasabi, so that's really nice to see if you use those services. Now let's take a look at the setup of the license-free Unify Identity. You'd see it right here, it's just called Identity, and we have a couple different things that we could do. We had changed the site logo and we have our different services. So we obviously want our file access. We could auto send out invitations when the user has an email and you could require them to use a code. You'd also use directory integrations, which I'm not gonna do. I only have one user on that, which is me. So how to set up the users? 
All we need to do is go to the bottom left hand corner, admins and users. From here, I'm gonna click on my name and I'm gonna invite myself again because I had it expired. So we're gonna invite again. This is gonna bring you a link or it will push out to the user's email. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the link so that you guys could see this. Okay, now with that link set up, you could see it says set up on this computer or set up on your phone. I'm gonna be setting it up on my phone. And all we need to do, we need to download the Unify Identity Mobile Endpoint from the App Store or the Google Play, and we need to scan this QR code. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scan it. With the Unify Identity app opened up, we could see File Access. I'm gonna go ahead and press play on this, and you're gonna see that I click on File Access, and I'm able to get to some files. I have Cody's Drive and Cody's YouTube. If I click on my B-roll, we're gonna be able to see different movies and also different images or PDFs within that. You would see there's a camera image there, and this is a lot easier to do now. I think the Unify Identity Endpoint will be really good for remote users who just need quick access to files, maybe some floor plans on their phone. It's very simple to do, and it doesn't push you out to another web page like it used to. I'm really happy with this improvement. The last thing that we're gonna take a look at is on the Ubiquity video that they just released on the Unify Drive 3.0. It looks like they may have teased a couple new NASes. So if we look over here, it looks like we have a four bay. That could also be an NVR, I'm not 100% sure. But then down here, we have that 16 bay, which is like the ENVR, but it is the eNAS, so the Enterprise NAS. And then on the right hand side, we see a completely different model that we've never seen before. This is a 2U and it has eight different drives. So this is really exciting for people who want either a four bay NAS, 16 bay NAS, or an eight bay NAS, and I hope these do come out. That's gonna be it for this video on Unify 3.0. Let me know what you think about maybe the new NASs as well as this update. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.